possible, just a quick, a quick recap of energetics first. So you got, you got, you had a, I mean, you, you already know what enthalpy changes, uh, exothermic is, endothermic is. So we're going to move past that. You know what activation energy is, et cetera. Uh, so I'll just uh, quickly recall uh, what are the definitions of enthalpy change of uh, formation. I mean, all these terms that are going to be used. So delta HF, uh, that's standard enthalpy change of formation. Uh, not writing down the whole definition, but what happens in enthalpy of formation is that one mole of a substance is formed from its constituent elements. So one mole, I mean, this is not the proper definition. You already have the proper definition, but just stating quickly what is enthalpy change of formation, one mole of substance. So it's the energy that is associated with this. One mole of substance uh, formed from its elements in the standard states. In standard, in standard states. Uh, so if I if I were to write uh, enthalpy of formation of let's say uh, carbon dioxide, the equation would be that one mole of carbon dioxide is going to be produced, uh, and it's going to be produced from what? It's going to be produced from its uh, from its elements, which are carbon and oxygen, the elements must, everything must be in the standard state. It's going to be solid. This one is going to be gas and this one is also going to be gas. So the enthalpy change that is associated with this, that is enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide. And you can have other enthalpies of formation. Like if I were to write enthalpy of formation of, uh, let's say, uh, H2SO4 aqueous. Right, so, so one mole of H2SO4 aqueous would be formed from its so it's going to be formed from its from its from its elements and the elements in this case would be h2 in this standard state sulfur and it's going to be o2 and there's aqueous so uh, there's going to be you're going to so you will write aqueous as well that's uh that's how it's going to be so it's going to be formed from its uh, elements and standard state this is a gas this one is a solid this one is a gas as well so that's enthalpy of formation of H2SO4. Is it exo or is it endo? What do you what do you remember? Enthalpy of formation. It could be endo or exo. It, it could be both because uh, bond breaking and bond formation both are happening. So it could be endo or it could be exo as well. For example, in this case, this is actually combustion happening. So this is uh, exo. Uh, while uh, bonds are also broken and bonds are also formed. Uh, H2 bond is being broken and uh, O2 bond is being broken and they're getting formed. I mean, this is not balanced, so we need to, let me balance this as well, just a second. This is going to be two, two O2s. Uh, also remember, enthalpy of formation of elements uh, is always zero. So elements is zero because you don't need to form them. And then you had enthalpy of combustion. Now the enthalpy change of combustion was, uh, the enthalpy change of combustion was, it's always exo. And what is it? It's uh, when one mole, it's, it's the energy that is associated when one mole of a substance. is completely burned, not in completely, but is completely burned in excess oxygen. So it's, we're talking about complete combustion over here. So if I've got, uh, if I've got ethanol, which is C2H5OH liquid, uh, it burns in excess oxygen, O2, and it's going to produce CO2 and and H2O. So CO2 and H2O, and there's going to be two CO2s and I guess three H2Os, uh, and one mole of ethanol must be burnt. So it's going to be how many oxygens? That's four plus three, that's seven. So there's going to be three, six oxygens over here and one over here. And all of them would be in there. This is gas and this is gas. And this one is going to be a liquid. 
So that is enthalpy of combustion. It's always exo. Uh, in th- and also remember enthalpy of combustion of things that have already burned in excess oxygen. That's zero. So for example, enthalpy of combustion of carbon dioxide, uh, enthalpy change of combustion of uh, water, things that cannot further react with oxygen. That's their enthalpy changes are are zero uh, because nothing is going to happen. If you burn carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide will be formed. So nothing basically will happen. Then um, a lot of times uh, for a lot of reactions, uh, enthalpy of formation and enthalpy of combustion can represent the same reaction. So for example, if I've got this reaction, H2 plus half O2, and it's forming a, it's forming H2 a liquid. So liquid um, gas. Now the enthalpy change of this particular reaction, can I, can I call it both things? Can I call it enthalpy of combustion? Or is it enthalpy of combustion or is it enthalpy of formation? What is this one? Both. It's, it's both. This one, this one can be referred to as the enthalpy of formation of H2. Then the uh, state will be uh, gas. Whose state? What water? See, if you're if you're talking about standard enthalpy change, then it's a uh, room temperature you're talking about. So it's going to be liquid. Okay. Yes. The enthalpy of formation of water is that uh, one mole of water would be produced from its constituent elements, right? Enthalpy of combustion of H two is one mole of H two would burn in excess oxygen to form H two O. So both of these, they represent uh, exactly the same thing. There's no difference whatsoever. They, they represent exactly exactly the same thing. So, so the values would be exactly the same because they represent the same process. They represent exactly the same process. Is this clear, this one? Yes. Yes. Uh, so then you did another one, which was, um, so just quickly jumping to the next one. Then in um, in AS, uh, you did another one, which was uh, what? Which was enthalpy change of neutralization. So it was delta HN, uh, standard enthalpy change of neutralization. What happened there? One mole of water was formed. So it was the energy change or enthalpy change of the process where one mole of water was formed. When an acid and a base reacted. And it has to be one mole of water getting formed. So if I've got NaCl, NaOH, which is a base, and it's reacting with H2SO4. So what will happen is that uh, Na2SO4 will be produced. And, and H2O. Can I refer, now the enthalpy change of this particular process is called the enthalpy change of neutralization. Uh, is that true or not? Would you call it the enthalpy change of neutralization? Of this process? Mm-hmm. And what's the reason for that? Why can't you call it the enthalpy change um, of neutralization? Isn't it that one? Yeah, so, exa- one so exactly, this is, I mean, you can still call it the enthalpy change of neutralization, but it's twice the enthalpy change of neutralization because you had double the amount of water is getting produced. If it had been one mole of water, then it would have been enthalpy change of neutralization, but now it's uh, twice the enthalpy change of neutralization. And uh, also remember that um, if I have another reaction, and in this reaction, it's I've got, uh, I've got uh, barium hydroxide, not barium, barium hydroxide, let's barium hydroxide reacting with uh, HNO3. And it's going to form barium nitrate and now will this reaction have a different enthalpy change of neutralization value wise? Or is it this is also twice the enthalpy change of neutralization, right? Will the two values would would, would they be exactly the same or will they be different? The same. The same. Yeah, they're going to be exactly the same because both of these reactions, although uh, 
the substances are different, but both of these reactions are exactly exactly the same because uh, the reaction that is happening at the end is exactly the same. The base produces OH ions and the acid produces H plus one. So whatever is happening is this thing in both cases. The rest of the ions are not doing anything. They're spectator ions. Uh, so this is all that's happening in both cases. So delta H N is always approximately equal to minus 27 kilojoules per mole for any strong acid or base. So for any strong acid or base, uh, it's always going to be uh, minus 57 kilojoules per mole. Uh, for, for weak acids, and basis, the value is slightly less exothermic. Why? Did you, did you ask a question? Yeah, I was saying, why uh, is it that in the case for weak bases, the uh, enthalpy change of neutralization is uh, lower? Okay, so first part is clear, right? That every time you have an acid and base, this is the reaction that's happening, right? The acid produces H plus one and the base it uh, produces OH ions. So no, so the sodium and the barium, they're basically not doing anything. They're just spectator ions, right? So every time the value is going to be exactly the same. For weak acids, the value is going to be less exothermic. And the reason for that is, uh, what is by definition, what is a weak acid? A proton donor that uh, partially dissociates in water. Okay, so, so the first thing is a weak acid does not ionize fully, right? So it does not ionize fully. Uh, and let's take an example of a weak acid, like ethanoic acid, right? Organic acids are weak acids. Uh, they don't, they don't like to ionize. You got CH3, C, double O, minus one, each plus one. So, so not really ionizing a lot. Uh, meanwhile, if you have nitric acid, it ionizes fully. Um, so what will happen is, because what is the reaction that's happening? The acid is supposed to produce H plus one ions, right? Nitric acid is a strong acid. It will produce H plus one on its own. Not a lot of energy is required for that. But when you have ethanoic acid, it does not produce a lot of H plus one ions. It does not ionize. So some energy is needed to ionize the acid. Because it's not happening on its own. So for the reaction to happen, you would have to heat it. You would have to make the ethanoic acid lose an H plus one ion. So that would make the reaction slightly endothermic because uh, energy would be needed for ionization. Hence, it's going to be less exothermic. Is that point clear, Bilal? Yes, sir. So that's the reason why, uh, even though both of them uh, kind of have the same reaction, except that some energy is needed for, for ionizing a weak acid or a weak base. So that's why it's less exothermic. So the value would be approximately around minus uh, 52 to minus 54. I'm just giving approximate values. So it would be around minus 52 kilojoules per mole to minus, uh, let's say, 54 kilojoules per, per mole. Just one second. Okay, so, so that's the approximate value. And it's always kind of the same value. It's uh, for a strong acid and strong base. Now we're gonna to move towards, uh, uh, we're gonna to move towards A2 now. So we're gonna start off with enthalpy change of atomization. Uh, that's the first one. But before moving to, let's do all the other formulas that you that you did in AS. Uh, the formulas first, all the things that you studied in AS. There was a thing called uh, bond energy. So just briefly describing it, uh, it's the energy that is needed to break one mole of uh, bonds of the same type in gaseous molecules. Uh, 
So bond energies are given. You have a data booklet, you, you can find bond energies in that. The first formula was that if you have any reaction, uh, remember bond energies are calculated for gaseous molecules only. They don't apply for solids or liquids or gases, so only gases. So calculated for only gaseous molecules. And uh, so I've got a reaction and that reaction I've got, uh, so I've got, I've got uh, N2 reacting with CH2. And let's say it's producing two NH3. It's not reversible at the moment and it's producing. So the first formula that you did was uh, you figure out how many bonds are broken. So over here you got an N triple bond N. So you're going to break that and you got an H, H2 bond and you got three of them. So you're going to break all the bonds in the reactors. So these so are, the are we still recapping what we did in AS? Yeah, I'm just quickly recapping what we did in AS. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this class, we'll, we'll just go through everything that you did in AS. I'll just give you one question on this, right? So we haven't started A2, right? A2 is just going to be a continuation. It's just, it's just going to be pretty much the same thing. Um, about NH3, how many, how many bonds are formed? That's uh, two of these molecules, right? So basically, uh, this is bonds getting formed. And bond formation is exothermic, so that is going to be negative. And bonds broken, that's endothermic. That's going to be, that's going to be positive. So the enthalpy change. The first formula that you did was that the enthalpy change of the reaction is basically it's bonds that are formed and minus bonds that are that are broken. So that's that's your first formula that you did in the S. Uh, and you can calculate these values. You, can, you have got a data booklet uh, that would be given with the question. You can find. Uh, that you're breaking an N triple bond N, that's 944. And you're breaking one of them. You have to be careful in counting the bonds. Uh, there is what? There's an H2 bond. Uh, what is the H2? H2, I think, is 436. So what is H2? That's uh, 436. And that's going to be 436 times uh, 3. And minus the bonds that are formed, N H bonds. That uh, what is that? The N H bonds. That's three ninety. So that is three ninety times six because there's six uh, N H bonds. What is the answer? Can anyone tell me what the answer is for this? Negative eighty eight. You're getting negative 88 kilojoules per mole, right? So that was that was the first formula. Again, I'm pretty sure you know how to do this. It's a uh, no bond. Abdullah bond breaking is endothermic. That's why it's it's got a positive value. These bonds are broken. The bonds in the reactants are broken. So it's you can think of it as reactant minus products. It's bonds in the reactants are broken and bonds in the products are are formed. So these are all positive values. These are all negative values, the ones that are formed. So is this clear? Yes. And then the next thing that you did was you did the Hess cycle, which was, uh, now the Hess law is important because we'll be doing another version of the Hess law, which is kind of the same thing. It's, uh, but you would have to draw Hess cycles. Actually, Hess cycle or Hess law is kind of more important in, in drawing the whole cycle. So Hess law stated, so a lot of Hess law in A2 as well. So Hess law stated that the enthalpy change is the same, no matter what path is taken. The enthalpy change for a reaction is the same. No matter which So no matter which path is followed or is taken. Uh, so that is what the Hess law is. What, what that basically means is that uh, if 
if I've got a reaction in which carbon reacts with oxygen and it produces carbon dioxide. So it ends up producing carbon dioxide. Now, uh, that is, let's call that delta H1. So I'm going all the way from uh, forming carbon dioxide from uh, these, my, these, these are my reactants, carbon and oxygen. Now there's going to be another path. There could be multiple paths that could exist and that could do kind of exactly the same thing. So what I can also do is I can first, instead of making carbon dioxide first, I can first convert the carbon to carbon monoxide and use half of the oxygen. So there's half O2 still remaining. So I could have done that first. And then I could have reacted the remaining carbon monoxide and converted that into carbon dioxide. So I could have split the reaction into two steps. And just hold on, hold on one second very quickly. So this one, we you've split the reaction into two steps, and you can hear me, right? Yes. I said we can split the reaction into two steps. Um, now, what the Hess law stated was that the enthalpy change is going to be exactly the same, no matter what path is taken. So this path over here, and this path over here, they have exactly the same enthalpy changes, which basically means and you can, you can, so you've kind of linked up three reactions. What that means is that delta H1, which is the first path is equal to the other path, which is delta H2 plus delta H3. The energy changes of the second path and the energy changes of the first path are kind of exactly the same. Path one is equal to path number, uh, that's equal to path number two. Um, and that's what the Hess law is. Uh, one path is equal to the other path. And these could be any two paths. So, so what the Hess law does is it links up three completely separate reactions. This cycle has three reactions. One of them is carbon turning into carbon dioxide. Then you've got a reaction in which carbon is turning into carbon monoxide. Then you've got a reaction in which carbon monoxide is turning into carbon dioxide. So three completely different reactions have been linked up using the Hess law. And also remember, it could be any two paths that could be linked up even as long as the starting point and the end point is the same. So you could have linked up this path. So I could have linked up this path with, with this path. Uh, the inequality would still be the same. For example, this one would be, uh, if I do this, my shorter path is delta H3, right? And if I go opposite the arrow, that's, that's the sign changes. So this one would be minus delta H2. So it's going to be minus delta H2 and then plus delta H1. Now compare the two, they're exactly the same. They're just, they're just rearranged versions of each other there. I mean, this one is exactly the same as this one. Is that clear that you can, if you have a cycle, you can, you can, you can compare any two paths as long as the paths are exactly equivalent. That means you, the reactants and the products should be exactly the same. Do you this all clear, right? Yes. So we'll we'll try and practice a few questions uh, related to drawing the Hess law. We'll come to formulas later, but uh, a lot of questions on Hess law would come, especially with the drawing stuff. So so let's uh, do a couple of questions. For example. And I'm going to open the AS worksheet just a second. Oh, not this one. So specifically, this has law. Drawing has cycle the same. This one.
so just a few questions uh, starting with the first one um i mean this is this is all about uh, starting with the first one so enthalpy change for the transformation u to r is 42 so u so we're going to go from you're going to go from u to r now the only path available to us is this one u to r so that's going to be this sign changes that's minus 92 and this other one is uh, its direction also changes. That's plus 184. So are we getting the right answer? I think we are. Is that clear? First question. Yes. Uh, T to S. How do you go from T all the way to S? So T is over here. S is over here. The only feasible path is this one. It's uh, this arrow direction has to change. So it's minus 75. And uh, then this arrow direction changes. That's minus 92. So, so it's going to come out to be exothermic. Uh, they were saying that it's endothermic, so that's wrong. And then you have R to T. So how do you go from R all the way to T? Uh, that's going to be, so I need to go from R to T. And for that, the only feasible path is, I need to change uh, this as well. So the only feasible path is this one. And that's going to be minus 134, right? Then uh, plus 92. Uh, these arrows are in the right direction. This one has to change. So that's going to be plus 75. So if I solve this, it's, it's not going to come out to be minus 33. It's going to come out to be plus 33. Is the first question clear, this one? Is this clear? Yes. Yeah, but is this clear why I took uh, whenever I go against the arrow, that's I, I'm, I'm going in the opposite direction. So that's why I'm going to take plus 75 not. I have to go in this direction, in the opposite direction. So anyways, this this question, this one is a slightly tougher question. You have to uh, hopefully know you know what skeletal formula is. That's a skeletal formula of uh, cyclopropane. So the enthalpy change of formation of cyclopropane is this. So cyclopropane is one, two, and three carbon atoms, right? So it's uh, it's one, two, three carbon atoms. It's got uh, H atoms over here. Remember, carbon makes four bonds, H atoms over here, and it's got H atoms over here. So that is what cyclopropane is. Now, um, he's talking about he's talking about formation. So formation of cyclopropane would be, uh, what, what would it be? It's going to be carbon, solid, elements, H2 gas, and they're turning into cyclopropane, which is C3, H6. It's going to be CH2 and CCs. And this value is known. That's 53.3. So that's the first information that's given. The formation of cyclopropane has this value. So cyclopropane getting formed from its elements. Is that clear, this one? Is this part clear? Yes. Sir, so can you explain it one more time? Yeah, I'm just saying, I mean, do, do you know what over do you know what cyclopropane is, right? It's three carbon no, atoms. Sir. I'm just talking about the first information that's given. The formation of cyclopropane is 53.3. What is this? So this is cyclopropane C386. So what is the enthalpy change of formation? That is that one mole of cyclopropane would be formed from its constituent elements. The elements are carbon and hydrogen. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Because I'm just looking at the first statement, that's it. And I'm trying to make a Hess cycle. Remember, Hess cycle is that there's going to be another path for doing this. That's how Hess law questions get solved. So it then states that the enthalpy change of atomization of graphite is uh, 717. Uh, let me explain what atomization is, although, although we're going to do atomization in A2, but atomization is simply that the carbon solid turns into carbon gaseous atoms. So three carbons solid will turn into three carbons gaseous atoms. The H2 remains exactly the same. 
So I added a little step. That little step is that the enthalpy change of atomization of graphite is 717 times 3. Because atomization is for one mole, uh, I'm doing it for three moles. So all I did was I took the second statement and I connected it with the first statement. The first statement was this one. The second statement states that carbon can be turned into carbon gas uh, if you give this amount, amount of energy to it, 717 times 3. Times 3 is because I've got three carbons. Is this clear, this part? Is this clear? Oh, my yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so Alicia, Anna, Bilal, is this, is this clear? Shyan, clear? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Then it says that the bond, so remember my whole purpose is that I'm going to try and make a whole cycle, right? Then he says the bond enthalpy of HH is 436. So I can break the HH bond. I got an HH bond. I'm going to break it. So the three carbons stay as it is. I'm not changing them. I'm going to break the hydrogen hydrogen bonds. Right? So you can see over here, what did I do? I took the H2 molecules, broke the bonds, I got six hydrogen atoms. Uh, so I broke three of the bonds, uh, three H2 molecules. So I broke, that's 436 into, and times three, right? So I've connected this one as well now. And then what, what can I do? Now they're saying that the CH bond is 410. So what I can do is, once the atoms are broken down, I can make cyclopropane. So I've got these atoms now and I can make this cyclopropane. So how many bonds do I need to make? I need to make uh, six CH bonds. Bond formation is exothermic. So I'm going to put, give it a negative sign. So I need to make six CH bonds. I need to make three CC bonds as well. So that's my last step. So this is what I did. They gave me enthalpy of formation. Its value was given. They told me carbon solid turning into gas is 717. They told me that H2, if you want to break the bond, that's uh, 436. I broke three of them, so that's 436 times three. I got atoms at the end, and then I completed the cycle. I was able to make this complete cycle because uh, this last step requires the CH bond energy, which is given over here, that's 410. So, so I'm going to rub off the CH bond energy, replace it with 410. Is this cycle clear to you, this one? Is this whole cycle clear? Yes. Yes. So I've uh, I've been able to now. Now the question is basically asking me to calculate this thing. So remember, once you have the cycle, that's easy to do. It's uh, one path is equal to the other path. So all I have to do is just equate the two paths. So that means fifty three point three is equal to this entire big path. That's seven hundred seventeen times three. And uh, 436 times 3 as well. And then it's uh, minus 6 times 410. And then there is one unknown, which is minus 3 times CC. So that's minus 3 times, let's call it X. So you just have to find what X is. And you should be able to, one path is equal to the other path. So you should be able to find this. So try solving this one. You can try, I'm, I'm going to send you a snapshot of this, or you can take a snapshot on your own. And tell me the answer for this question. What is the CC bond energy? Uh, so is this question clear? So you're getting 3 and 15, which uh, I guess uh, that is the correct option. It's going to be 300. 15. So remember Hess law, uh, what Hess law is. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick recap. Uh, so Hess law simply is the questions are going to be difficult. A2 questions are going to be slightly simpler than this uh, because it's the same. I mean, they have a pattern based question. It's a, it's, it's a very typical question that comes on it. But remember the fact that uh, we did. Uh, so just remember this fact that one path is equal to the other path and we'll, we'll do a couple of more questions on this. Yeah, uh, go, over the, go over the question. I'll just quickly go over the question once more. They gave me the enthalpy of formation of cyclopropane, right? So what I did was, 
the elements forming cyclopropane. That's 53.3. That's the first thing. Then they gave me the atomization of graphite. I just told you because, because you haven't studied atomization. I told you that atomization of graphite is common. So atomization is a, a solid element turning into a gaseous element. That's what atomization is. So they gave us that value as well. So what I did was I took the elements over here uh, and I changed the solid to gas. That's it. So this is 717 times 3. Then they gave me the HH bond energy. So what I did was I had the H2 molecule. I broke the H2 bonds and that gave me 6 H atoms. So that's 436 times 3. Then I had the atoms and I was able to make uh, this C3H6 molecule. So the atoms they connected, how many bonds need to be formed? That's 6 CH bonds and 3 CC bonds. So 6 CH bonds, that's this. And 3 CC bonds had to be formed as well if you want to go from atoms to the molecule. Abdullah, is this clear? So, but these questions are difficult. So, uh, so take a snapshot, go try and make this on your own. We'll do a lot of uh, more of these questions. Then we'll move towards lattice energy, TK. So let's continue tomorrow then. TK, I'll send you some. I'll, uh, so let, no, yes, exactly. Remember, drawing the Hess cycle, remember the, the multiple, TK, that's an important question. The multiple ways of actually doing this question. But remember, CIE expects you to draw the Hess cycle. So the best way to learn the Hess law is to learn how to draw the Hess cycle because CIE expects you to, they ask you to draw the Hess cycle. Uh, there are multiple ways of doing this, uh, but since uh, they're going to ask you to draw the Hess cycle, so it's better to actually learn how to draw the Hess cycle. The shortcut is the formula. We'll come to the formulas later on, but uh, uh, but most questions they require the Hess law. We'll, we'll go into the details, but remember, Hess cycle is the basic. That's the basic thing that you should know how to draw this because they're going to ask you about this. TK. TK. Okay, everyone. Take care, Hello.